getting louder. Hey, I feel like that music's getting louder. What's going on here? Are you ready for chapel to start? I feel like I'm ready for chapel to start. We're ready to have some fun today. Who's ready to have some fun today? Who's ready to have some fun today? I love worshiping Jesus. It's always fun. Let's see if we can get this started. Good morning, Life Christian Academy. Oh, thank you very much. That made me very happy. It's nice to see everyone. <clears throat> At this time, we have some awards to give. Would you please raise your hands up very high? Wiggle your fingers in the sky. Bring them down right to your knees. Make some noise, if you please. Here we go. Because I, Riley, would like to nominate Maya Darlin to receive an Eagle Pride Award. Oh, a little more noise than that. Yeah, Maya, come on up. Listen to this. Maya made me happy when I was sad. Oh, thanks, Maya. That was nice of you. And make some noise on your knees. We're celebrating these students that have modeled our core values. They love God, love others, speak life. They pray powerful prayers. Because I, Adriana, would like to nominate James Thomas to receive an Eagle Pride Award. Listen to this. Because James helped me learn how to do football, and I like that he helped me. Way to go, James. But wait, there's more. Because Judah also nominated James Thomas. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Judah said he is a nice and funny friend, and he tells the funniest jokes. Yeah? Yeah. And he is very good at football. That's a nice Eagle Pride Award. Way to go. Make some noise on your knees. A little bit louder. A little bit louder? Okay, that's good. Because I, Claire, would like to nominate Alice to receive an Eagle Pride Award. Listen to this. Alice showed that she loved God and loved others by trying to help people when they were worried or sad. She also spoke life by complimenting others. She prayed powerful prayers by praying for her Nana. Could you give her a round of applause? But wait, there's more. Veda Miller said this about Alice. She is super kind and she is encouraging to me and my friends. Way to go, Alice. That's quite an Eagle Pride Award. And make some noise on your knees because our last Eagle Pride Award for the day is I, Asher Noonan, would like to nominate Quentin Anderson to receive an Eagle Pride Award. Listen to this, Quentin. Asher said that you are kind and polite and you tell people to mask up in a nice way. Quentin is also doing everything with a happy heart. Way to go, happy heart, Quentin. But wait, there's more. This is what Tara said. Whenever I'm about to come, uh, to come in, Quentin rushes over and opens the door for me. What a gentleman. Thank you, Quentin. Uh, and there is more. When I come in the class, he gives me compliments, and he is always in a good mood. He is always in a good mood. That is true. Give our Eagle Pride Award winners a round of applause as you stand to your feet, please. Everybody's up. Everybody's up, and we're going to get ready for our pledges and prayers. So if you're facing this way, you can raise this hand and put it over this heart. On you, not on me. Perfect. Two people got the joke. And then we'll face the American flag in attention with our voices off until it's time. And Maya, whenever you're ready. American flag ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's turn and face our Christian flag. Christian flag ready begin. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to our Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and in love. All right, Alice, could you raise that Bible and then everyone hold up their right hand like this? Bible pledge ready begin. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Its word shall I hide in my heart that I might not sin against God. Just bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day, and I pray that everyone who is sick with COVID-19 will heal and that everyone keeps their masks on so they don't get it and that everyone has a good rest of the school year. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Let's give these Eagle Pride Award winners one more big round of applause. And they've got certificates. And then, yep, let's get a picture of them really quick, too. Oh, if you could stay whoa. right there, we'll get a photo. Yeah, they can be right there. That's perfect. Photo up. No, everybody. Oh, did you say it? Jeez, very good, very good. Hey, stay on your feet because it's time to get ready for worship. Let's invite our worship team leaders up here today. They're going to do the motions, and then we can do them right where we're at. Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for giving us strength, like that song talked about, giving us energy for each and every day. God bless our chapel time. We pray this in your name. Uh, boys and girls, before you sit down, we're, gonna, we're not done worshiping you. I just wanted to give you a fair little uh, warning, I guess you might, might say. That first song was fun, was dancing around. It was fun to try to follow along with what you guys were doing. Uh, but the next song is more, you know, it's, it's more of a prayerful song. And it's, though there's not like the... Yeah. 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 
all, all those, right? We don't have, <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Wait, that wasn't being streamed live, was it? Oh, no. I'm, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be an internet sensation now. Uh, so, so unfortunately, the, uh, the next song isn't going to be dance around crazy and fun, but fortunately, it is going to be in a moment where you connect with Jesus. So I encourage you, through the words of this song, that you would make this your prayer. I would encourage you that you would forget about what's going on beside you and just have your focus on God. And the Bible says that when we show up to meet with him, guess what? He is there. We have a promise where two, two or three or more are gathered in his name. He is there among us. So God is here with us. And I don't want you to miss out on a connection with God because you were too worried about what was going on around you or what somebody else might think about you if you were to worship. So this is your chance. Really press, really press in. Have a, have a moment with, with God this morning, okay? Let's sing this next song. It's all about how he loves us and we can run to him and he will never let us go. Let's sing the song together.
God, we thank you for your great love for us. You'll never let us go. You'll never leave us or forsake us. God, we are so thankful. I just, I hold on to those promises whenever something scary comes up, something, some bad news comes around. God, I know that you'll never let us go, and uh, you'll never let me go. You protect my heart. So, God, thank you so much. Lord, I pray that you would bless today. May you speak to us and your um, and to our hearts, boys and girls. If you'd like God to speak to you today, if you just will, if you're willing to hear from Him, just just let Him know um, in a, in your own prayer in your own word. You could just say, "God, I want to hear from you today. I'm open to what you would say to me." Jesus, we pray this in Your name. Everybody said, "Amen." Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, thanks for your help, you guys. Appreciate that. Um, get your mask specs on now. All right. What happened to my Bible? I lost my Bible. Oh, it's right here. Found it. Good morning, everybody. You guys having a great day so far? Oops. I'll need those notes. My name is Nick. Uh, if you had forgotten, I know we've gotten to know each other a little bit. If you guys were watching the, uh, the kids' church online that we were doing for our kids' church here, how many of you uh, remember doing that? And then, of course, I was here at chapel... Christmas, which seems like a long time ago now. So if you had forgotten who I was, my name is Nick. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Great, great, good deal. It sounded like this. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, well, today we're going to kick off our chapels with, um, I want you guys to know, the theme for this month. This is real love. God's love is real love. Now, uh, February is a, um, there's a holiday in February. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? President, is President's Day in, oh, yes. Um, not a national holiday, a international holiday that's in February. There we go, yes. Mr. Smart Guy over here, he tried to distract me with the President's Day thing. Yeah, Valentine's Day. How many of you guys know what Valentine's, Valentine's Day is all about? It's about candy, of course. Oh, that's, what I, that's what I like. That's why I like Valentine's Day, because I, I love candy. But I also love my wife, and so I'm going to make sure that I do something nice for her. Because, you know, Valentine's Day, yeah, it's like that. It's that romantic kind of love, right? Yeah, I heard someone go, bah! yeah, see, there we go, some... Some real people back here. How many of you um, are excited about Valentine's Day? How many of you are expecting a nice gift from a significant other? Anyone expecting to get? I don't. I don't mean like a parent. I mean like a, a husband or a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Anybody expecting? I see adult hands. This is. Oh wait, wait. Faith. Is that faith? Who are you expecting to get something from? We're breaking news right here. No, we can talk about that right. We can talk about that another time. Um, no dating at Live Christian Academy. So it doesn't really, doesn't, you know, so I hope you don't get too uh, upset come Valentine's Day. Um, so, so we're not talking about the romantic love, okay? Love, real love, true love is different than the romantic kind of love. We use the same word for it, but God's love is true love. It's a love that wants to protect you, to uh, seek out what is best for you, and to do what is best for you. That's, that's what true love is like. That's the kind of love that God gives. And I want you guys to experience and maybe even like start on a, an adventure to experience and to know and discover what God's love is like. This whole God's love or whole God thing might be new to some of you. And like this is the first time you've been in an environment, a, a place where people talk about God. Um, and so I hope that th as we start off our chapel theme for, thi for this month and it's, it, as we go on continuing, that you start in a, a discovery process of finding out what God's love is really like and how much he truly does love you. He loves you. He wants what's best for you. And he did something amazing for you. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. In fact, I'm going to tell two stories today. Two stories. The first story is about a guy in the Bible. His name um, was Nicodemus. Okay? 
Nicodemus. There's a second story that I want to tell. This second story is not from the Bible. It's from a guy, a guy um, from Olympia. His name is Nicholas, which just happens to be my name because the story is about me. It is, it, yeah, the second story will be about me. The first story we'll talk about from the Bible. The second story is about uh, when I was just a kid. Now, let's go to the, the story first. It happens if you, if you uh, uh, want to know and look it up. Uh, it ha- the story we read about in the book of John in the Bible, in John chapter 3, okay? And um, just, just a little spoiler alert, it is in this chapter that we get one of the most well-known Bible verses ever, Okay. So in this story, though, we see this guy named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus, he was a leader of religious law and the practices. They had all kinds of things that they had to do to show that they loved God, that they were following God, okay? And this Nicodemus guy was one of the people who, like, taught and to make sure that people were doing this. Um, and he was one of the examples. So he was a leader. He was what, I guess, nowadays we call these kind of people influencers if they were on, like, on social media. How many of you... Um, are a social media influencer. Anyone here? Anyone know, like personally know, a social media influencer? Because that would be really cool. Oh, yeah? Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so this is like, kind of like what Nicodemus was doing. He was making sure people did it right. Doing it, doing it right. But at the same time as he was uh, this leader and this expert of the law, the Jewish religious law, he was also very curious He was curious because he had heard about a man named Jesus who was doing miracles far beyond what they had ever seen before with their own eyes. And and when they heard this Jesus guy teaching, he taught with such wisdom that nobody else could teach with and such authority that, that nobody else they had ever heard be able to speak with before. And so this Nicodemus guy, he was very curious what was really going on with Jesus but he was kind of stuck because on one side, he was supposed to be this guy who had it all together. And on the other side, he was like, I really need to know what it is that, he's, that this Jesus guy is talking about. I really need to know what eternal life that he's talking about is and how do I get to that. So he was stuck. He had this fear of, of um, maybe being like looked down upon by his peers, the, his, his, the other people that were like him, to like, oh, you had to go talk to Jesus? You had to, you had to figure out what Jesus was saying? <laughs> so there was kind of a little fear here, right? There was a little, like, worry that he had. He was, like, not so sure if he wanted to. And so he came up with this little plan. He came at night to find Jesus. And so this little story here in the book of John chapter 3, it tells, tells us this short little interaction, this conversation that Nicodemus had with Jesus. It says there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. And Nicodemus said, Rabbi, which is a, the, like a name for teacher. Um, so if you guys call your teacher in class, if you call them Rabbi, Oh, it really wouldn't, it really wouldn't work. Never mind. Okay, that, that doesn't work out. Um, he says, Nicodemus says, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And then Jesus just came right out and said, well, Nicodemus, he kind of like cut him off, I have a feeling. I tell you the truth. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, Nicodemus was like, wow, you've been showing us this kingdom of God. You've been showing us what God can do. And Jesus was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But unless you're born again, you won't ever see the kingdom of God. Um, And Nicodemus kind of says something funny here. He's like, what a second. Wait, wait. Beep, beep, beep. Back up the truck. That's right, because the big truck, when they back up, beep, 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 beep. You guys catching on? I actually am funny. I actually am. Um... He, he, so Nicodemus is like, well, hold on a second. I'm already a grown man. I can't be a baby again, and I'm not wearing diapers anymore. I mean, that's kind of like what he was saying. There's, there's no chance that this, this can't happen. And Jesus is like, well, you're, you're missing it, Nicodemus. You're missing it totally. And he goes like, how could you be a, one of the religious leaders and not understand this? Jesus says, you have to be born again here in your soul. Here in your heart, you have to receive that true love. And then Jesus says this very famous 
famous line. It's one of the most well-known Bible verses ever. Probably one of the very first ones that I memorized when I was young. It says, that, well, I could tell you the first Bible verse that I did memorize when I was young. Uh, oh, that's, that's smart. Jesus wept. This is the shortest one. I remember, I, I, the one that I knew, that I remember, the first one that I remember was God is love. 1 John 4, 8. That's, that's, that kind of, that was the first one. But definitely this was one of the very first. John chapter 3, verse 16. It says this, that God loved the world so much. Now this is Jesus talking. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Have you guys heard that before? Raise your hand if you, if you, if you recognize that. Okay, so lots of hands. So that's great. If you hadn't heard that before, guess what? Now you have um, God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son whoever, that, so that anyone who believes in that son, and then that's S-O-N, that's not the sun in the sky, the S-U-N, that's S-O-N. Whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was saying that God the Father loves us so much that he sent Jesus, the Son of God, down to earth to die on the cross to take a punishment that we deserved so that we could be forever in heaven with him. That is great, great news. That is such great news. Nicodemus heard this and he was just blown away. But I have a feeling he was still... Um, I guess maybe trapped in this fear. Well, what if I, what if I, what if people find out that I was talking to you about, like, and showing that I don't have it all together? What, what if I start doing what you say instead of like all that, you know, all my other Pharisee friends that, that we do together? What, what, there was lots of fear there. Now, boys and girls, I know a lot about being afraid. Can I tell you a story? When I was young, 10 11 years old. How many of you are 10 or 11 years old? Raise your hands, please. All right. All right. Almost 11. Okay, very good. Uh, I think I was about that age. I was, I was at home. I was at home. Uh, it was just my mom that was home with me. My sister was somewhere. I didn't really care about my sister back then, and so I didn't care where she was. Um, that was just kind of the relationship we had. She didn't care about me. I didn't care about her until I went off to college, and all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my sister actually is cool. So we kind of, right, anyway. Um, that was just extra information. I didn't really know where my sister was, but this story doesn't involve my sister anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Why am I talking about my sister so much? Because ah, I, I do love my sister. Yes. Anyway, I was home. My mom was home. My mom um, comes to me and says, hey, uh, Nicholas, which is my name, um, I have to go. I'm going to leave you home alone. What? What? I, I get to be home alone, which is, on one hand, a little bit, you know, makes me a little nervous. On the other hand, I knew right where all the cookies were. I knew where all the candy was. This was fantastic. I could clean through that stuff in a matter of moments before she got home, and, I would, and no, one would, would, no one would know. So I'm, I'm putting together my plan of how much I'm going to live my best life right there in that, that day. Living my best life. My mom's not home. My sister is... Who cares? My dad's off at work. This is going to be amazing. So my mom leaves. She literally left. How many, you guys are used to being home alone? Anybody used to that at 10, 11 years old? Okay, all right. So um, she leaves, and of course, I immediately, I immediately look to see that she actually did leave, and just to see if it like wasn't a test, like she was going to like act like she left, like close the door, clunk, and then And act like she was leaving, and then like peek and to see if like I was gonna go sneak the cookies or something. I actually waited for her to leave, drive out of the driveway, and go. So I knew the coast was clear. Um, things were looking good. She was gone. Cookies, candy, all mine. I didn't. I don't remember if I ate all of them, but I enjoyed myself. Um, and then I heard something, you guys. I heard footsteps on the wooden deck outside of my front door. Um, what? And so I did what every brave 10, 11-year-old kid would do that uh, would seek to you know, protect his home. I went and hid in the closet in my bedroom. 
Yeah. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. This is actually, a, this is strategic. This was strategic because I knew in my closet there was two things. I had a bunch of shoes. So if there really was a bad guy out there, I could take the shoes and like, chuck them at the bad guy. Back, back. You, you, could call, you could call me Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. I mean... I could pretty much be that same level, right? I, I also knew in the closet there was something else that would probably protect me better than the shoes were, although I would probably be a better aim with the shoes, but there was a BB gun that my dad had gotten for me for Christmas the year before. So I knew that was in there as well. So see, I, see you thought I was silly for going in the, into the closet in my bedroom. But I actually did go to hide, and then, and then I realized... Oh, yeah, the BB gun's in here. Phew, that's good. So, you know, it's one of those BB guns where you hear, like, pump it up, and, like, <laughs> clack, 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 clack. Uh, my boys, you, got, you have, remember, you've, we've done the BB gun at, at their house, right? Okay, anyway, so I'm there, and I'm getting this BB gun ready in my closet, trying to be as, cl as quiet as I can, and I hear the, I hear the activity outside of, and it's like knocking. Go, 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 go. Like, what? Go, 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 go. And then I hear the door, the doorknob rattling. You guys, I'm freaking out at this point. How many, how many of you guys recognize the, I'm starting to feel it. How many of you have ever felt like this before, right? Okay, all right. And then, if, if things couldn't get any worse, the door, I heard the door unlock, like unlatch, and, okay, so we didn't have like an old house, and I don't think it squeaked, but in my mind, the way I pray, play back the story, I, the door was very creaky, opening it up, right? Okay, so I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is, I'm, I'm gonna, I got one good shot. This is all I got. Um, my baby gun's not going to do anything. <laughs> and then I heard something else. This is what I heard. Nicholas! It was my mom. It was my mom the whole time. She had come back home. I didn't, I was too busy shuffling my face with cookies. I did not hear the car drive back down into the driveway. It was my mom. She had come home. Uh, suddenly she had forgotten and she had to, anyway. And when I heard her voice, you know what I felt? I felt such relief. I felt all of that fear and that worry. It was, it was for nothing. I felt like it all just go like, oh, phew. Oh. And then she's like, Nicholas, where are you? And then I like had to like get up out of the closet real quick. Like, oh, I'm, I'm in here in my bedroom. And then I, she walks in. My closet door is open. It's like, why is the door open in your closet? Oh, I was um, organizing. It's like, yeah, right. You know, she, she knew that I would still don't organize anything. Um, so, but I, the point is this. The point is, you guys, when, you, when I heard the voice of my mom, who I know loves me, all of those fears and those worries, they went away. I did not, I did not feel, they were, actually, they were actually replaced with comfort and peace. So I'm telling you this story, not because it's funny. Because, well, it is. I, I do enjoy telling it. But I tell you this story for one very important reason. Maybe for some of you, the idea of God's love is weird. The idea of God might be weird for some of you. The idea that, that there is this being in heaven who really, really loves you and was willing to give up his son and to die on the cross for you, that idea is like, huh? I don't get it. And it can cause some confusion. It can cause some worry, some, even some fear. Like, what, what, well, what, if, what if this and, and what if that? And kind of similar to the way Nicodemus was feeling when he started on a discovery to know Jesus better. So here's my hope, you guys, that you, through this month, as we talk about how this is real love, how this is God's love for you, um, my hope is that you would open your heart to what he would say to you, that, that just like I heard my mom's voice and the fears and those worries went away, that you would hear God's voice and experience him in your heart and that any kinds of worries would also go away and that you would actually have those be replaced with comfort and peace in your life. I wrote down a little response and I want to read it just so that it gets, I'm really, really clear. Here's my hope, that you would open your heart to Jesus 
you would give him a chance to speak to you. And you would recognize that this is a safe place. Not like this, like this stage. Not like this room, although this room is a safe place. But this, this school. And when you come here every day, Monday through Friday, that this is a safe place to experience real love. This is a safe place for you to ask a question. Well, what, a, what does that even mean? That this is a safe place that you can, you can allow yourself, you can kind of like put down a guard. You can put your guard down and say, okay, I'm curious. Nicodemus had to put down his guard. He had to kind of put his pride away for a second to be able to talk to Jesus. His curiosity led him to a place where he listened to the voice of Jesus talk about how much God loves him. And that's my prayer for you. Not just through this month of February as we talk about this, but through the rest of our time together this school year while you are here with us at Life Christian Academy, that this would be a constant daily desire for you to know the love of God. Can we pray real quick before we go? Would you close your eyes with me? So I just want to ask you that you close your eyes so that there isn't any distractions that you would have, that you would have a moment just here by yourself. I mean, obviously there's other people in the room, but a, a, a moment with you and just God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you and, and even challenge you, are you willing to experience real love of God? If you are, it's really simple. What you could say is, God, I want to hear from you. You could say that in your heart. You know, he's listening. He knows. He, know, he knows what you would say to him. Just, you would say, God, I want to hear you. I want to experience your real love. Help me see this as a safe place to talk about you, to know you. Jesus, I open my heart to you, to your love. And Jesus, we pray this in your wonderful, loving name. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, you guys. Well, this is just the kickoff of our This Is Real Love uh, lessons and theme that we are going to do here in chapel this month. I hope you enjoy it. And Mr. Gentile, back to you.